given that z1 is equals to 1 plus j2, z2 is 2 minus j3, and z3 is negative 4 plus j12, determine Roman number 1, 3 z1 plus z2 minus z3, Roman number 2, z1 plus z2, z3 over z2 plus z3. So how do we solve complex numbers in Cartesian form? So starting with Roman number 1, you'll be told to determine 3z1 plus z2 minus z3. So you handle each and every term independently. You handle each and, each and every term independently until you have one term. So the first term here is 3z1. So you handle 3z1, that is 3 times z1. Substitute the value of z1, that is 1 plus j2. So a factor outside multiplies all the factors inside. So 3 times 1, you get 3. 3 times j2, you get j6. Because 3 times 3 is 6, isn't it? So we have 3 plus j6. Then the second term is just z2. Then the third term is just z3. So we can now get the whole problem there. 3z1 plus z2 minus z3. So if you bring them together, you have where there is 3z1, you put the value of 3z1, which is 3 plus j6. Then plus, where there is z2, you put the value of z2, and z2 you are given to be 2 minus j3. Then it is minus z3. Where there is z3, you put the value of z3, which you are given to be negative 4 plus j12. So after that, you open the brackets. So if you open the bracket, we'll have the first term there is 3 plus j6. So that first factor is 3 plus j6. Then positive will not affect the second factor there, isn't it? So you'll have positive 2 minus j3. Then the last term, negative sign going inside the bracket, negative into negative 4, you get positive 4 and negative into positive j12, you get negative j12, isn't it? So there we have positive 4 and negative j12. Then after that, you collect the real terms on their own and the complex imaginary terms on their own because it is in the form x plus j y. So the real terms are terms without j. That is 3, positive 2 and positive 4, isn't it? So you bring them together. So 3, positive 2 and positive 4. So you collected all the real terms together. Then plus j into, put the, all the coefficients of j inside the bracket. The first coefficient of j we had positive j6, meaning the coefficient there is positive 6, isn't it? So that coefficient there is positive 6. Then the next j, we had a negative 3j. I think the coefficient of negative 3j is negative 3, isn't it? Then the next, we had a negative 12j. Then the coefficient of negative 12j is negative 12. So the next step is just to simplify. Start with the real. The real part is 3 plus 2 plus 4. So 3 plus 2 plus 4, we get 9, isn't it? So that is 9. Then simplify inside the bracket there positive 6 and negative 3 and negative 12. What do you have? That is 6 minus 3 minus 12 will have negative 15, isn't it? Negative? Negative 9, isn't it? So 6 minus 3 is positive 3 minus 12 is negative 9. So there we have negative j9 because positive and negative is negative isn't it so that is how to determine that given problem in roman number one let me move to roman number two following the same procedure you have to undo each and every term until it is in the form of x plus j y isn't it so there you can see in roman number two we've been given 
be told to determine Z1 plus Z2, Z3 over Z2 plus Z3. So, we have to add to each term independently. So, Z1, of course, is just a single term, so we don't have a problem with that, isn't it? Then we go to the second term. In the numerator, we have Z2, Z3, so we have to simplify that. So, Z2, Z3 will be Z2 times Z3. We substitute. What is the value of Z2? It's 2 minus J3, and the value of Z3 is negative 4 plus J12. So, you substitute the values of Z2 and Z3. Having done that, we now multiply, multiplication, that you start Yes. Morning. So, the second part will be told to determine Z1 plus Z2, Z3 over Z2 plus Z3. So, to solve this problem, we start by handling each term independently. So, the first term is Z1, but it's just okay. So, the second term then in the numerator, we have Z2, Z3. So, Z2, Z3, you substitute the value of Z2 and the value of Z3. So the first bracket there, 2 minus J3, the first term there is 2. 2 multiplies everything on the other bracket, isn't it? So 2 times negative 4, you get negative 6, and 2 times J12, positive J12, you get positive J24, isn't it? So if 2 multiplies everything on the other bracket, we have negative 8 plus J24. You are done with the first term in the first bracket, isn't it? Then the second term in the first bracket is negative J3. So negative J3 multiplies all the terms in the other bracket, isn't it? So negative J3 times negative 4, that is like negative 3 times negative 4. You get positive 12, isn't it? So positive 12 times J is positive 12. J. So that is J12. Then negative J3 again multiply positive J12, isn't it? So there you will have negative into positive is negative 3 times 12, that is 6, j times j is j squared, isn't it? So negative j3 times positive j12 is negative 36 j squared, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. So negative 36 j squared, j squared is negative 1, isn't it? So negative 1 times negative 36, you get positive 36, isn't it? So it means when you multiply negative j3 and positive j12, you get positive 36, because we are going to get negative 36 j squared, isn't it? And j squared is negative 1, so that is positive 36. Then you simplify by collecting real terms, so you don't need to waste time collecting real terms, you just work it out on the spot. So the real term there we have negative 8 and positive 36, isn't it? So negative 8 plus 36 we have, negative 8 plus 36 we have 28, so negative 8 plus 36 is 28, then collect the complex part, positive J24 and positive J12, positive J24 and positive J12, we get positive J36. Now in the denominator we have J2, we have Z2 plus Z3. In the denominator of that second term, we have Z2 plus Z3, so Z2 plus Z3, you substitute the values of Z2 and Z3. So where there is Z2, you put the value of Z2, that is 2 minus J3, then plus the value of Z3, which is negative 4 plus J12. Then you open the brackets, you open those brackets you have, in the first bracket is 2 minus J3, then negative 4 plus J12. A positive sign does not affect any sign of the bracket. So there you will have, if you simplify that, 2 minus 4, you collect the real parts, that is positive 2 and negative 4. You will get the real parts to be negative 2 
and you can collect the imaginary parts negative J3 and positive J12. So that is negative 3 and positive 12, you get positive 9. So we have positive J9. So you now join the numerator with the denominator. So the numerator is Z2Z3 Z3 over Z2 plus Z3. Z2, Z3 over Z2 plus Z3. So in the numerator we have Z2, Z3 we found to be 28 plus J36 all over in the denominator Z2 plus Z3 we found to be negative 2 plus J9. So what we now do is to multiply that denominator with the complex conjugate so that we are able to write that problem in the form A plus BJ. So to write this problem Z2, Z3 over Z2 plus Z3 in the form A plus BJ, then we have to get rid of the imaginary part in the denominator by multiplying by its conjugate. So the conjugate, you simply change the sign in the middle. So there in the denominator we have negative 2 plus positive 9 J the conjugate will be my minus 2 minus 9 j you only alter the sign in the middle if the sign in the middle of this factor is positive then it's conjugate the sign in the middle is negative isn't it so you do the same in the numerator to balance that equation it is like you are multiplying with one so in the numerator we now have 28 plus j 36 times negative 2 minus j9 so start calculating the first term in the first bracket in the numerator multiplies all the terms in the other bracket 28 times negative 2 you get negative 56 that is negative 56 28 times negative j9 so 28 times negative 9 what do you have 28 times negative 9 negative 250 2 j isn't it so that is negative 252 j. We are done with 28 in the first bracket. Then we go with the value. In the first bracket, the second value, the second term in the first bracket is positive j36. So positive j36 is just j36, isn't it? So j36 times negative 2, you get 36 times negative 3 is negative 72 times j. So that is negative 72 j. Then positive 36 j times negative 9 j. What do we have? 36 times 9? Negative 3. 36 times 9? 3? 3 24, isn't it? Then positive in the negative is negative j times j is j squared, isn't it? So j squared is negative 1. So negative into negative is positive. So you remain with positive 324. So that is positive 320. For. Then in the denominator is a, a difference of two squares, but now the j squared will change the sign in the middle to positive, isn't it? Because if it is a difference of two squares, meaning there is a negative sign in the middle, so j squared negative to negative will be positive. So what is our first a value there is negative 2. The first term of those two conjugates is negative 2, isn't it? Then the second value is the second term of those conjugates, which is j9, but 9 is what we have there because j squared is already changing the sign in the middle to positive, isn't it? So, simplify that. If you simplify the numerator, collect real terms, the real terms we have there is negative 56 and positive 324, isn't it? So, what is negative 56 and positive plus 324? 2. 268, 268. Then go to the imaginary part. Negative 252J minus 72J. What do you have? Negative 320. 324J or J. 324, isn't it? Then in the denominator, what do we have? Negative 2 squared is 4, 9 squared is 81. You have 85, isn't it? Isn't it? So 85 is now a common denominator, so you divide the real part with the imaginary part, so the real part will be 268 over 85, 
then the imaginary part will be negative 324 over 85j because that 85 is a common denominator. Are we together? So you divide both real part and the imaginary part with their common denominator. So that is 268 over 85, then minus j 235 for 2, 324 over 85. Are we together? Yes. So it means the task for rationalizing the denominator is to ensure that you don't have an imaginary component, the, the imaginary unit J in the denominator. You don't have the imaginary unit J in the denominator. So that you are able to have it in the form of A plus A plus BJ. So from there, we can now join the first term and the second term in our original equation. So in our original problem, we had Z1 plus Z2, Z3 over Z2 plus Z3. So substitute the values of that. The value of Z1 is 1 plus J2, isn't it? So whether it's Z1, you put 1 plus J2. Then where there is that term, Z2, Z3 over Z2 plus Z3, we found it to be what? 268 over, so we have plus this second term, which we found to be 268 <coughs> over 85 minus 324 over 85J. So collect the real parts on their own and the imaginary terms on their own, isn't it? So the real terms there, if you open that bracket, we just have one plus J2 plus 268 over 85 minus 324 over 85 J. Now simplify that by joining the real terms together. So the real terms we have there is 1 and positive 268 over 85, isn't it? So 1 plus 268 over 85 gives us the real part, then we have plus j, give us the imaginary part. So the first coefficient of j is positive 2, which is just 2, and the next coefficient of j is negative 3, 24 over 85. So what do you get if you simplify that? Now if, if you simplify that, 1 plus 265 over 85, you found 350, 353, over 85. So the first part 1 plus 268 over 85 is 353 over 85. Then the second part 2 minus 324 over 85. Negative 154 over 85. So we have negative j times 154 over 85 because that is the coefficient of j, isn't it? So you've now solved that second part. I will see now to determine the complex problems, meaning each and every term in that problem must be in the form A plus JB. Are you seeing that? Meaning if you have a term in the denominator, you have to get rid of the imaginary unit in the denominator by multiplying that factor in the denominator. 